Okay, I think we can probably get started now. Um, so thanks everybody for joining. This is the CNF Working Group. Uh, we meet every Monday at 1600 UTC. Um, to talk about cloud native network functions. Um, before we dive into the agenda today, is there anything that anyone would like to add? Okay, hearing nothing, I think we can probably jump right in. Um, so the first thing on the agenda today uh, is the use case template um, that uh, Vuk put together. So I saw him on the call earlier. Um, and I know there's still quite a few comments around this, but does anybody want to kind of talk through this? Or does anybody have comments or look, is there anything you'd like to say? Hope you can hear me. Um, so maybe just uh, uh, as, a, as a way of uh, intro for the people who didn't get uh, active in the, in the pull request, uh, the template uh, for the use case was supposed to be uh, informative about the, the use case, uh, practical use case that uh, should serve as a basis for, uh, for um, extracting or recognizing or, or discussing some best practices. Uh, that we want to uh, finally end up with. Uh, and I try to put uh, uh, actually the template together in a way uh, to, uh, to serve this purpose of informing who are the actors uh, or, or personas or roles in this use case, what do they want to achieve um, agnostically of technology, how would they expect the system uh, to, to function, and then ultimately, what do they see as a challenge or as a limit or as a suboptimal behavior of the, the cube native approach and, and uh, to describe that. Um, so this was a logic behind um, the template. Happy to tackle well, specific points if needed. Yeah, so I actually have one question. Um, so I see here that you put it in the like the CCDP like folder. And I was actually wondering if it would be better to put it in the use case folder. Um, if we want to say that's where like the templates are. So rather than I think you put it under um, this one, I, I guess I see where you did that because there's like the other templates in here. You are right. It was uh, my omission. Actually, I overlooked uh, when was creating a pull request. So I think I made another commit in the, in a fork. Uh, I'm not sure I need to to create additional merge request uh, for that to to end up in the uh, in the main repo. So we could do it uh, either by me correcting that uh, and, and pushing another, uh, creating another pull request or approving that. And then I uh, make a correction with additional pull request there. You don't want to update the current one? Uh, I can update the uh, current one as well. Okay, thanks. But I, um, I need to look that uh, uh, because I couldn't update any more the, the branch because the uh, merge request is active. So I would need to probably restart it. That's strange. You're saying you or, can't commit to your, um, your own, the use case template branch? Correct, but I'll, I'll look at that uh, and we'll correct it. We'll reach out to you if uh, I have some blocking points. You should be able to um, modify on your own side, in your own, and um, you may need to do a, a merge because I see that your branch is, it might be behind master. Is it? Is it possible for me to just change it? Do you know? Uh, not in the user, uh, in the GitHub interface. You'll need to, okay. to clone it and to do it. Uh, okay. Then you would have to request a merge back to his and then a merge back to the other. 
which is possible. I've done it, but it's <laughs> yeah, good. <you get. laughs> okay. Don't think the purpose is to get lost in the in the Git usage. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other thing I wanted to chat about, uh, just to hear like other people's opinions. So, um, just because this also goes into like an issue that we have open right now, is like this involved parties section, and there's kind of like a discussion whether this should be defined in this section or should it reference out to like a, a separate documentation. Um, yeah, and so the related issue, in case people are interesting, is issue number 54 of creating similar to how we have um, like a use case section and um, like a uh, like proposal section, also creating like an actor section. And um, look, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said like people should go in here and define that um, like in the use case whereas some other people are asking like for it to be defined in a separate document. Uh, so we could, I, I was really thinking about uh, what would be the most e or easiest and the most meaningful way for people who are writing the use cases to do that. So if we define it in a, in a sense of foreign key um, and say here are the, uh, you know, you need to hear in this uh, template, uh, pick one or, or more of the roles that are defined in another document. It might be for some people who are writing that uh, additional burden to look and say, okay, which persona, which uh, um, actor is there. And if there is no actor that he wanted to do it, he will need to ask to extend that uh, uh, other document. So I settled down on uh, leaving it a bit more freestyle because it's uh, the information that we will extract later on in the best practices and we'll map it to real personas or actors uh, there. But I'm also not very much uh, fixed into whether it's like this or, or open. So the idea is for, for the uh, the chapter um, describing the, the parties, I think I, I wrongly used the, the word party, um, didn't mean parties, but the different hats that people have uh, or different personas um, to actually summarize who are the human uh, participants in this use case and then what do they want, what are their needs. Uh, and then in the next stage, which system components are involved uh, in that use case and then how do they behave. So I felt it's maybe better to give it to the writer of uh, the um, um, use case to describe and to think about with some examples, but open for discussion. Um, this is Watson. I'm seeing, it seems like people are using the phrase use case and user story almost interchangeably. And I'm wondering and we and I've seen in here that we're saying that we're going to have a requirement for use case, but not a requirement for user story. And it's wondering um, what people are thinking about that. Just as an aside, the user story has a, a lower barrier to entry than the use case. Like if we're going to say people, if they're going to submit a principle, they need to point to something. The use case has a, a higher threshold. Um, but yeah. I don't know if anyone else has seen it. Yeah, I was actually gonna bring that up later um, because we do kind of have like another issue open where we have, where we talked about like creating use user stories. And obviously the, this pull request is around the use case because that's how we originally defined the issue. And I, I guess maybe that's a, a open discussion like would we prefer to have user stories or use cases? And yeah. We, we're going to end Those up with both. Those are two different things. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, 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 and it's, it's, not, it's not that they're, they're equivalent in terms of, should we use one or the other for this thing? It depends on which thing you're trying to do. Yeah, and, and it's um, important here because we're starting to say one of something's required. So we're saying that use case is required, 
their use cases have more information in them uh, than user stories normally. So um, if we're going to go by like a Ivar Jack uh, Ivar Jacobson's definition of use case, so um, but, but use yeah, case so is we're more theoretical, this, right? It, 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 a use case is broader, but also more theoretical. Um, how I reasoned about the uh, use case, it is something that's very practical. Uh, and that's kind of uh, uh, mine to, to mine the, the, the best practices out of it to, to trigger the discussion. So real life stories from different angles who are saying, hey, here is uh, my, my situation. Uh, this is how I think it should work and then this should enable me if I move to the cloud native net world and then cloud native network function, uh, this is what I will face with or that I'm already facing with and what's the best practice or what's the user story. Uh, so I would say that the use case could contain many user stories, but it's if you compare it to the movie, so you use case is entire movie and user story is a scene in that movie. I think that's, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that's true. If you look at the, the, um, um, the use case that I put in the other day, the other week, it's specifically a use case because it says I need a tool to do a job. A user story would theoretically describe the job. Um, but the problem with user stories is you don't really want somebody to be describing their their situation as regards, you know, how they're going to make money out of their customers. It gets complicated. So that BGP use case actually works quite well as a use case. I want BGP. And it's reasonably self-evident why you might want BGP. A user story, and there's one I've got in motion that I'm trying to, well, actually make look like a user story because it's got altogether too much in the way of opinion in it at the moment, would basically say, um, in this instance, it's going to say, I want to install a CNF on my network. What's it going to, what are people going to want to do in the process of doing that? And it involves dancing around development teams who are going to make the CNF and then hand it to ops teams who are going to deploy the CNF because, you know, potentially uh, with, with some hedges around it saying potentially those, those two teams are in or not in the same organization. So a user story is really about describing people's actions and the results they intend to do with, to achieve by those actions. But a use case here, as I used it before, is really saying, here's a description of a tool that we want to be able to run. I mean, um... We're talking around um, the questions so that I think one of the questions was, um, do we want to require one and which is it or both? We could say this is requirements and specifically for best practices. So when you're proposing a best practice, what is required? They are two different things. I don't think there's any disagreement on that. And then which, if any of them are required? I would say either or both will serve because what you're looking for is justification that there is a problem to solve. And being a best practice, this fundamentally has to solve a problem. So your suggestion, Ann, is you, you must have one or the other or a list. I mean, any of those, yes. Okay. So yeah, maybe I'll add that. that as a suggestion here. And if, if I look at the uh, user stories, let's say in my daily job, it's usually something very specific. As a network uh, admin, I need uh, whatever functionality X in order to do thing uh, Y. So when I think of a user story, it is very specific, very, very narrow focus, but also gives some, uh, some very good scope for it. And the use case is more like, uh, you know, broader context of that whole thing. I think like, that's the, the problem with these terms is we're not 100% consistent how we define them because what you're calling a use case, I would call, I find I've been tainted by rally, I would call an epic, which is another form of user story with a broad scope. Yep. But the, the reason I'm distinguishing in my head, 
use case doesn't necessarily involve actors. It involves more about functionality. Mm -hmm. I am trying to do this thing and this tool would help me to do it. Or there is a thing I want to be able, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to involve people. So whatever words we use to categorize those, I think the important thing is requirements documents are required to justify whatever we suggest you refer to use cases, user stories, and any other things in this folder. Okay. And so I guess the question is, so what does that mean for this pull request? Are, are people like happy with it the way it is, like taking into account our previous conversations are the things people like changed? Yeah, essentially, I think what is very much needed for us to have is a, a reference uh, anchored in the in the real life. You know, that, that this is yeah. uh, really an essence. Uh, that we need to bring out of uh, either user story or use case or, or whatever so that we can uh, when somebody proposes something uh, be able to discuss around it uh, to understand why it is so is it like a real case is it maybe a theoretical case is it a very broad case happening everywhere or very focused niche one and then out of that um, uh, derive uh, understanding of what should be done in order to make things uh, better in the cloud native uh, sense. And this last piece is uh, best practice actually, which I mentioned. Okay. So I could work this uh, PR uh, around uh, the systems so that we eliminate people out of it. And uh, if, we, if we want that to, um, and then simply say how the system should behave and, and how the systems, uh, uh, what are the challenges with the, with the um, systems uh, when we talk about cube native approach. So this would give us uh, that scope and we can keep the, the users in the, in the user stories. But I felt detaching actors from systems because actors always have expectation of the system might give us too too much uh, breakdown uh, or we'll potentially start start dealing with you know, how do we categorize the things is it here or there and, and so on so i would suggest that put it together into one kind of yeah i don't know how we would call it merge of, of user story and then use case one of the reference documents or uh, real life reference whatever so you're saying that the template should be an overall template for use cases or user stories and people can fill it out to their use case or user story. Is that correct? Uh, more or less, I think it uh, should have been looked at uh, once again uh, and maybe extended or more generalized. Maybe we could have options in the template, like, you know, if you don't need this chapter, please skip and focus on the other one, something like that, I, I have in mind. Okay. Yeah, so maybe with that framing, people want to kind of like look through this pull request again this week and see mm. what, like, yeah, if there's more things that should be added or like contextualized or things like that. Taylor, I see you're unmuting. I guess. With the talk, the confusion on use cases and user story, um, my gut feel on it is that we should have two different templates. And ideally, um, not only a template, but if we can point to two examples that people go, yeah, that's a good user story. I understand why that's a user story. Um, and then the same for the use case then when someone is looking at the template, they can go over and look at you know, real, real information, not just lorem ipsum, and it's filled out. My suspicion here is that while Vux stuff is useful at the moment, 
it's the answer is right, before we commit it, we try and use it to see how well it's working and then we can adapt it to what does actually work when we try and put real information in. Uh, or alternatively, we just commit it and we say, here is a worked example, try this. It's not mandatory that you use this, but we recommend this as a, as a starting point. Uh, it depends on what we're trying to do here. Are we trying to tell people they must comply with this template or are we trying to tell people that if they use something like this template, their job will be easier? I mean, ultimately, um, it boils down to what we want for the uh, best practice uh, proposal. Um, and then uh, the suggestion here is don't bring any best practice if you cannot reference it into a, a real situation. You know, don't even think about it. Mm. Yeah, I guess. But I'm confused by that because this is a use case template. so not best practice template so no, no, the, i'm not uh, saying that this is a so if you propose a best practice you need to reference it to something in the real yes. life be it a use case be it a user story be it um, whatever um, elaboration of the of the case uh, yeah just that uh, uh, best practice should not exist in isolation yeah i i think um, i i certainly agree with that i think we all do actually i i, I think we have consensus um, so I'm fine with that. Um, but on this particular document, yes. So we, we, for best practices, we need, you know, context, use cases. For use cases, we want a use case to be complete. And this is a means of trying to get people to get it to be complete by having all of the information it's going to need, Some, not suddenly be stuck wanting something that we forget later on. But if we attempt to write a few more use cases, I wonder whether we could do a better job of that because we'll see where it turns out they do need information and where it turns out they don't. And then you'd have, rather than us basically arguing somewhat academically about what would be good and what would be bad, we could say, you know, this is what would work best for us because now we've got a little bit practice, we've got our hands dirty. Actually, I uh, had in mind to write uh, one or two use cases, but I uh, uh, put that on hold until uh, we discuss the template uh, <laughs> and uh, um, not not to write something and then the temp according to template and there is a lot of uh, other ideas. So I can certainly uh, proceed with that and maybe if somebody else would uh, volunteer uh, and, and proceed with the additional one maybe following partially or, or uh, fully the template and then uh, exactly what you said, Jan. Um, get the hands dirty and then simply say, okay, we, we had this uh, uh, struggle with this template or we couldn't fit this or that and then we adapt it. Yeah. I can leave it as a, as a pull request. I can uh, bring additional commit with a, with a concrete example and... Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I doesn't um or they i'll say the update to the readme doesn't say use of the template is required it's not we're not demanding that so the template is to help people if you have no idea um what you're doing i guess for building a use case um or try to provide answers to questions so i'm not opposed i'll say to moving forward on merging something just mm. so if people want it if they want to build a use case and they have a lot of content but they don't know how to format it and this helps them then that would be fine too we can always go back um, one thing that i would suggest is if we can link out to references for sta the standard definitions for use cases and user stories would probably be good maybe at the top of or mm -hmm. somewhere in here so that we're not you know we don't have to come up with our own thing these are old terms and there's probably a lot of templates yeah i guess um so also randy put in the comments uh plus one for committing now and perfecting later um i guess Maybe my suggestion is it sounds like uh, both Vuk and Ian like both have like use cases um, that they like are considering writing up. Uh, maybe I propose like try using this template and come back like next week. And if you don't have any 
like major issues, we say like this is our first um, first draft of the template, and this is what we're going with for now. But obviously, it's completely open to be perfecting later. You know, we can always change things. This isn't just a static document that keeps on living. So, I think maybe we yes, yeah, so we try it out. If there's nothing wrong, uh, then we say this is what we're using for now. And then as we find things we'd like to change, modify, or update, we can do that um, in the future. So rather than getting stuck on, is this template perfect? Um, being like, this is our first step and then kind of moving from there. Yeah, I think uh, I would go a step further than that. I would say if at any point in the week we think this template is good enough, if, if it hangs together and it's self-consistent, then you know if everybody's happy, we can get it in as well. Um, it, it, there's no need for it to be perfect. It sitting in review forever is not helping us. It just gives us somewhere to kind of needle uh, Vuk and basically point out all, all the shortcomings in the document. That's not helping. Um, so, you know, I think there's a, I don't know how many comments really do sort of point to strong need for change, but if we go through that, I think we could probably have this ready for certainly next week and possibly in the week. Yeah, does that sound like a reason? The main item to address out of this that um, there didn't seem to be a big disagreement was about the actors or personas or whatever you want to call them, the roles, and being able to break that out. Well, and if we got nowhere else to put it right now, then why don't we put it in here and then break it out in a separate commit, which is a, you know, and then fine, the actor list will be maybe not have perfectly considered opinion but again if this is a place to start with a use case that's fine um, and then we, we can put more consideration into that actor list and then just refer it out when we when we put the actor list commit in that sounds good okay so if you had comments um, in this PR, that you're asking for changes, then go back and. Well, I just, um, I haven't reviewed the document yet, but I just saw a few HTML entries. So if book, you can remove those as well, like all the PRs entries. Yeah, those ones. Oh, too. yeah. Like, uh... um, yeah, just for formatting, uh, they're not visible in the, if you view file, go to view file in the three dots up. Uh, yeah. not there. Three dots. Oh. No, no, still. You see three dots upper right. Yeah. View file. Then it's actually breaking the lines. Uh, go up. They were here. Oh, yeah. I think uh, the, the writer of the um, use case will anyway remove the content. Okay. Yeah, I guess if there's any HTML stuff, I mean, yeah. If you go down, uh, it passed the linting uh, on on merge yeah. request or on pull request, so I wasn't uh, too much upset. But thanks, uh, Victor. Okay. Um, great. Um, then I guess this kind of discussion goes into the next one um, about like user stories. And I guess um, so this issue is like, there should be user stories too. I guess my question was, do we want to close this? Do we want to have a separate thing? And it sounds like kind of from the previous discussion, is that we see user stories as like a, a different way to justify um, a best practice. So we should have use cases and also user stories. So we should leave this issue open for right now. Okay, 
just going to comment this on the issue too. So we have that too. Um, uh, and then the, this, this next issue too is also the issue for um, defining the actors and their roles. Uh, but as we said before, um, this is going to be in a later PR. Um, so I don't know if somebody wants to volunteer uh, to take that up. Uh, feel free to raise your hand right now, or otherwise we can uh, wait. Is anybody interested in taking the first stab at defining the actors and moving forward with that? Um, I think Taylor's got a proposal and I've had some thoughts on this. So if we take it together and we can have a proposal, uh, we, we can put a pull request out. Okay. Sorry, Taylor, I'm volunteering you. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm good. I'm not sure on that. Okay, I'm going to sign both of you um, on the issue right now. And Vuk, if you want to um, review or talk with us about it, let, let us know. Okay, great. Um, then the next thing is, uh, so this is after the comments and discussions last week around like the governance, we tried to uh, define things a little bit more. So I think there's some confusion about what all the roles do and what they all mean. So we tried to like write something and obviously this is, I mean, the governance is up to the group. So this isn't like how it, um, we're saying this is how it is. So this is, we, it would be great to have feedback on this. So one, is, oops, wrong link. Um, one is around defining the max representation. So um, saying that one company can't come in and kind of control the whole um, control the whole thing. And so what this is is uh, one person from any company can hold a chair role and also one third of the tech leads can any can be um, from one company at a time. And I think Taylor, where did you pull this from? Is this from Kubernetes? Yeah, I think that was the. Um, I'm, I don't remember. It was a Kubernetes um, or, or TSC type of thing. Yes, this is pull, pulled from another project. Um, Taylor, do you mind if I, because Ian's comment was, he was talking about members of committee, but we don't have members of the committee. So it, in this case, it refers to tech leads. Are you fine if I commit this? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. Ian. We, we, we don't have a committee actually. That was Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Ian, that should resolve um, your comments too, I don't. I need to give this a review properly, I think, but yeah, okay. Yeah, you're- I, I mean, I, I, I see no problem with your diffs. Uh, um, that's fine. You, you've taken out the reference to the word committee. One, we, we've worked out what we're drawing people from, but maybe not what they do quite yet. Um, and so that's fine. We're solving them as separate problems. I think it's good. I, I don't have any problems with this. Okay. Um, so maybe I'll- leave this open for one more week just that we well if you don't hold it open on my account if let me just give a quick skim and see whether i like it i guess we have four approvals right now one two three four you one. You, you're about to get this okay i guess then i guess yeah if there's no more major disagreements i think we can probably merge this too so uh thanks victor for merging that um so last chance uh i think there's might still be inconsistency with the terms company and organization is there use them interchangeably uh company and this one is so is it all company now if that's the situation then it's okay uh yes it's all companies now i don't see yeah there's no organization left we so. don't organization at all 
No, we don't. We just say company. I think the other uh, PR for the voting does say organization. Uh, okay, so maybe it seems like it one, I think. company slash organization. I, I gave a link to the, the Kubernetes steering committee. Um, there's other ones too, but that was one of the main ones. Okay, yeah, you're right. Um, is it easiest just to change this to company slash organization? That would yeah, work. That makes sense. Okay. We're getting to the point that we're being paranoid here. If we actually start, yeah. if, 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 if we hope and pray that these rules will never kick in. But if they do, yeah. then, <laughs> if, if they do, then we interpret them the way we want to interpret them as well. So we've got a little <laughs> bit of options. Yeah. And there's no lawyers in this. Yeah, that's if it goes to that, we probably won't be on the call, Ian. <laughs> There's a committee again. Uh, We're definitely having yeah. a committee. That's very clear. <laughs> committee uh, editing. Yeah. Entire company slash organiz companies, organizations. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, let me, I'll refresh and commit this, or did you already do it? Uh, no, you can, you can commit those, it's fine. And then, yeah, um, thanks for pointing that out. Um, and then also related to that is around the PR approval process, because I think there is, I, I, this wasn't defined anywhere. Um, so this is, I started this as a discussion because I didn't want to start it as a pull request because I, I, I think this is like open. Um, of kind of defining what each of the roles do and kind of like what, I don't want to say power, but maybe responsibility that they have. Um, and kind of the way that I thought about this was kind of right, the, the lowest bar um, should be like the easiest. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the comment, Tal. Yeah, we can, be, if you want to, you can go in and put slash people but um, I think company slash organization is <laughs> as far as I'll go today. Um, but essentially, so, so right, the, the use cases is the lowest um, kind of like, let's say bar with one tech lead and two community members. Uh, the charter updates is two chairs, one tech lead and three community members. And best practices is uh, two tech leads and three community members. And um, kind of the idea here is um, showing that like uh, tech leads are really important uh, for doing this because they're the ones actually like deep diving into this and neither the chairs nor, nor the tech leads uh, completely um, have like the final say. We want to have community input in everything that we do. So while it's important because they're helping Kind of like let's say organize or like lead the group they're not uh they don't have saying like this is how it is and this is exactly how you do it but it's also driven by the community too um so this this first idea i'd like to hear like some thoughts on like these different roles and responsibilities Can't tell if silence is good or bad. <laughs> I'm not sure that those numbers necessarily work, but on the other hand, I, I mean, if we've got a group, then it seems like a quorum and then a majority would make more sense for charter updates. But, um, you know, conceptually, the idea that we deal with this in a separate document and we basically put thresholds in place seems perfectly logical. 
Yeah, this, this also feels like it's a little complex as well. It's hard to remember as to... Okay. Uh, yeah, if, if you go back to, again, my experience with OpenStack, I, I know it's anathema around here, but I'll just give it as an example. Then it would be, for instance, <laughs> most pull requests would be approved by two core developers agreeing. And that was maybe a little centralized, but it wasn't a terrible idea. Um, seems to me that there's not necessarily um, the use case and the best practice side of things. There's not necessarily any great value in having them differ. The charter updates, I think, is the one that needs to stand separate. And that would seem to be define a quorum and then define a majority. And to be perfectly honest, stick it on the tech leads because the community leaders, the community members are electing tech leads to represent them. Yeah, this is Watson. I was um, think we should consider um, the option of just the veto power for stakeholders. So for, for in our case, service providers, so users, and the ability for them to maybe have veto power on their best practice. And, and some the role for just that veto power and that's it. They don't have to vote for it, but they can say no, maybe a quorum. I would put, um, I guess, tying in with what Watson is saying, plus I guess what both Ian and Frederick y'all were talking about, the complexity, the two things that I think are the most critical to care about with regard to getting approvals are the charter and the best practices. So charter, I think that one's probably easier to say we want to be careful on, on what happens there. And the chairs are supposed to help with that, whoever's elected, or that's one of their main things, is trying to keep that moving forward. The best practice ties in with stuff, Ian, you've talked about, um, and other people, the best practices eventually, if, if they're adopted, we say as a group, yes, we have consensus enough to say, this is a good best practice. They're gonna go into RFPs and stuff. That's gonna affect um, companies and organizations that are developing. And it's going to be part of what service providers, what Watson is um, just mentioning. So there's needs to be something about the best practice. I think it's, a, it's important enough that we maybe differentiate that. Even if all the rest, like move, remove use cases, maybe the simple one under it is, we want some number of approver, approvers before something goes forward. But the best practices, I think, is equally as important as the charter because of the impact on adoption. Yeah, I think my, my point, though, is there's a separation between uh, the kind, the person or group that creates things, and then there's a, a separation, uh, and then there's another uh, group that is affected by those things that are created. So you could call those that second group stakeholders if you want. But that second group, there's certain limitations they should have on what someone's creating something. Um, maybe the direction, maybe uh, uh, is probably not the best place for for them to be doing, they can, they can create something if they want, but they shouldn't be saying, oh, don't create this kind of thing. But when it comes down to saying, oh, this is the best for everyone and you're the one consuming it, that, that affects you. And so that's where getting the state, the uh, veto power from. It can be abstracted away from this and put into governments and things like that. Who is it that's affected by someone uh, polluting the water, but someone else is the person that does irrigation or does all these other things with the water. They're not necessarily experts at uh, mining or managing water, but they do want to say, no, you can't do that in my neighborhood or my city or something. But do you think that city councils have enough knowledge about mining to make a decision like that? 
they have enough to veto it. They don't have enough to say, here's how you will mine, or here's how you will, they, they don't know anything about innovation of mining, but they can say, yeah, don't pollute my water. That's okay, but that's some kind of an external interface, but they, I think they don't have enough knowledge to say like what kind of like, drilling head you should use. Definitely. Whatever. Definitely, I, you're right. And, and, we are, and we are talking about this kind of best practices also, I think. Yeah. So, at the, at, so having the stakeholder or in our, you know, in our example, the citizen, but you could say the service provider, or whatever, they, don't, they aren't saying go ahead and move around or go ahead and um, here are the very specific kinds. They don't have power over here are the very specific kinds of drilling, for the example you're saying, or very specific kinds of technology you're gonna to use to solve the problem. But they can say that they wanna, oh, microservices, that is something, or microservices, no, that is not something that we want at a higher level. So it's more of a, and it's a veto power. It's no, it isn't yes. I mean, and they have veto power anyways, right? They can say, no, I don't want to buy your stuff anyway. So it's not like, yes. you know, this is getting <laughs> in information <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a minus two, the open stack world. So I guess it's, it's perfect, okay. What is the, um, if you have a, some I, I guess I'm thinking like in ju a justice or law where someone disagrees, it doesn't block, but it's noted so that it's public notice that there was disagreement on something moving forward. Can't remember the term for that. A, a complaint box that no one reads. <laughs> no. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 like a big controversial law and you talk about the dissent, so dis, uh, dissenting view. I'm just thinking of if, if uh, what you're saying. So the first is you're saying veto power and no, which means if, if a best practice proposal is put forward and you have, let's say most of the community, CNF working group community is like, yes, let's do it but you have someone with veto power that says no, does that just block it and we don't adopt it? Or would we want to okay. put the note that here's the problem that someone had with moving this forward? So it's a part of the, um, the proposal. Well, one in, there's one individual saying no and there's a quorum. So, All right. I would so take more. a lot more sense if you had a, so you now have a role. So this SP, it could be that we're saying this is all going towards SPs as the end users for the uh, product of the best practices. So mm -hmm. um, applications and infrastructure, whatever is developed following set of best practices, the SPs are going to consume that. And now we have a quorum of SP representatives that say, no, we don't want y'all to adopt that. We would prefer not to see it. That would make sense. So we don't have that role right now. Um, we'd need to figure that out, but I, it makes sense to me what you're saying, Watson. This is about the PR practice, uh, PR going in. So I'm not sure what you're thinking. Do you have any thoughts on how that would tie in with this or that you could add into the GitHub discussion? Otherwise, so I, later, Watson. So I just have one comment. Just the uh, best practices. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, just referring, uh, this, this discussion is only focused on the voting part, like uh, because uh, I guess we're assuming that um, any PR has to address um, all the comments and doesn't have any linter issues or things like that. So are we are considered those as part of the approval process or is just, uh, we're just assuming that 
those are going to be there like um we okay. should definitely write those down. So this is only for the approvers. This says approval process. What we should it really could be the discussion is um, how how many approvers do we need in the PR process before we approve a, a merge? Okay. So it's one, one atom out of all the rest, and you, and all those other things are important. Yeah. Um, this is a good conversation, but I'm going to push it to the GitHub discussion until next week because it seems like we still have some more ideas. So I'd like to hear kind of other people put their thoughts in here because um, I don't think we're going to come to a conclusion today. So it'd be great to have some more thoughts in there because we only have five minutes left for today. Um, I just wanted to get through kind of like the last couple of things on the agenda. One of them being uh, the uh, voting process. Um, so there is some discussion here, um, but there hasn't been kind of anything since last week. I just wanted to check in if people had had time to look at this, if they had any more questions, um, things like that. Because I, I think this is kind of like an important thing because the elections are going to be coming up here. Um, so just reminding people to look at this um, cause it would be great to kind of come to a conclusion and get it committed, uh, next week. Is there anything anyone would like to bring up about this PR right now? I mean, obviously feel free to on GitHub too. Okay. Uh, so four minutes left. Um, I also wanted to, uh, bring to everybody's attention that the self-nomination period is currently open. Um, and just as a reminder, in case you forgot, um, there's also a link to here, to nominate um, yourself for either a co-chair or a tech lead position, uh, please send the information to the mailing list. We'll get it approved there. And so far, we do have nominations for uh, co-chair from Jeffrey. Uh, in the service provider co-chair uh, from Ian for co-chair in the CNF developer co-chair <coughs> co position and also from book uh, for the co-chair or tech lead. Um, uh, so he's nominating himself for both. Um, that means um, oops. we currently don't have anybody yet from the Kubernetes community who's self-nominated themselves and we only have one tech lead. Um, so all the conversations we were having earlier about the PR approval process would be for naught if we only have one tech lead because none of that cleared the bar. So I encourage people, um, if you're interested, please consider running. And I, I know I've talked to a couple of people who have, uh, who were interested in running um, and, just, and just haven't submitted yet. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me uh, or Taylor to chat about if it's you're interested in. Yeah, um, are there any questions about the self-nomination period? It does end next Monday. I'd like to propose extending that. Um, we've had a bunch of questions. Okay. Uh, trying to address some confusion. Um, so extend both of them by at least one week and maybe extend the tech, the tech leads. We had more interest earlier and I'm trying to get some responses, um, especially in the Kubernetes community. There was discussions um, before the holidays and there's been some calls after maybe extend that one a week out so it's staggered. We have the chairs come in, but then we could still have uh, tech leads. And I, I know that there's some of the people have said they're talking internally. So I think there's the coordination internal to get back with us. I must admit I'm a bit confused about the tech leads because I'm not sure I, I know what the tech domains are. And so every uh, candidate kind of defines the domain and then proposes themselves as the leader. But 
can we try to somehow flesh out ideas for what are the tech domains that we're looking for leaders for? Yeah, so this is the part of the reason, Bill, I want to <laughs> extend tech leads further because of the confusion <laughs> around that. Um, the short would be we can have more than one. <laughs> There's no limit on the number of tech leads, um, although probably everybody shouldn't just go forward. The main idea is if there's an area that you think is um, that we need to that's important to focus on for the CNF working group and you have time and a passion to go into it, then you can put yourself forward for it. We don't have to say a specific domain. You may say, I wanna help with use cases. So that could be general, or you could say, you wanna help with a, um, maybe a best practice area like handling state in a cloud native way. You're like, I'm passionate about that because we're building applications that need to deal with state. So I want to go into that. And that could be a focus area. Um, but we're also talking about nominations for both chairs and tech leads that are going a year, I believe is the same, isn't it, Bill? It's yep. a year, for both, which means you may be focused on let's say cloud native state, because that's an area that you care about now, but three months from now, that may not be the focus, but you probably have multiple things that are gonna be happening. So you need to be able to shift your focus and not just think I'm doing cloud native state for a year. You'll do it as long as it's something that's relevant. I don't want to lock you into one to one anyone into one specific small area as a tech lead. Yeah, I was more thinking about maybe trying to get more people involved, and I'm trying to get some of my several of my colleagues interested. So it would have helped me if there were already a few areas or domains listed as areas that we are looking for like security for example uh, okay. are we interested in somebody with that kind of expertise are we not absolutely yeah i mean actually maybe a good first place to start um would actually be in the oops where oh Right when I can't find it, um, would be the, the different areas outlined here. Right, so those are based on categories trying to take a lot of the cloud native principles breaking them into various categories. And um, that's really what we're saying. So any anything if, if we go from cloud native principles and you start going down into an area, you can be at a higher level and say security. I want to, I care about anything security. Well, that's going to cover a lot of things or you could start getting down and go deployment issues with security. So it's, it's whatever you want on that, but definitely the cloud native principles would be the first place. And I gave another link the fundamental concepts that's I would say even a little bit higher than um, what this is but targeting at uh, cloud native principles so yeah um, so we'll s hopefully send out some information later this week to you know, clarify what the different areas are and then we'll also extend the nomination period for a week um, so we are a bit over, so thanks everybody that could stay on the line. I, I appreciate it. Um, unless anybody has anything else, I think we can probably close for today. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thanks.